Hello, my name is Billy Stead, and welcome to the Old 27 Grill. Today we're going to make Billy's small batch bacon, which is about 50 pounds of fresh pork belly. We're going to make a good traditional curing salt with three ingredients. We're going to start with a great kosher salt, an outstanding brown sugar, and a pink curing salt, which you can probably would have to order from a charcuterie store, or maybe could get at a, at a place that makes sausage or bacon in, in your neighborhood. But a little, little tricky to find, but you could on the internet you could find it. So let's get started. Over here, I have fresh belly, approximately 50, 48 to 50 pounds here of it. Comes in fresh, never frozen. It's already trimmed. I start with the best I can get. And when it comes in, it's ready to go just like this. I just slice them right in half, and we're going to do half bellies at a time. So let's mix our our cure, our salt, our brown sugar, pink salt, and then a good wire whisk to get a good even mixture. Starts taking on kind of a candy corn kind of look. Everything will be integrated in because we are going to use a lot of this. So a lot of people like to make it in advance. I don't. I try to make it per pure curing. That way it doesn't settle. Doesn't. I know what I'm getting every single time and I don't have a bunch of ingredients sitting around. So I'm ordering these things just in time. So there we go. Got a good even mix. I'm going to grab one of these bellies. See all the little cracks and crevices and the fun little nooks and crannies in there? We want to get it all down into that. That's what's critical to make good, good bacon. So we're going to start by pressing the skin side down into it. It's the way I like to do it. And then I'm going to roll up on both sides and tuck down in those crevices I was telling you about. Again, you really cannot do too much. Pack the sides, which is very helpful for getting you a good bark on this bacon. All four sides. Okay, when you think you've got enough, do it again. All right. So that is half of a Berkshire fresh pork belly. I'm going to set it in this pan. I'm going to get the other one and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Treating it with a lot of love and a lot of care because everybody loves bacon. And me, I'm a little picky about mine. I like to place them right back the way they came. This is going to set in a cooler wrapped real tight for eight days where I'm going to come in every two days, turn it, and drain the liquid off as it cures. Eight days later you get an amazing looking product which we'll show you in a minute. All right, you're on. All right, now welcome to Billy's Backstage Kitchen. This is where all the magic happens. We take the great pork bellies that have been curing. Let me show you those. Open the door here. We've got them wrapped really tight. You can see all that sugar and salt melting down in there. And we'll flip those over every two days and drain that liquid off. And then, and here we've got some bacon that's ready to be smoked. fully cured, there's no spice on it at all, it's ready to go in the smoker. I cold smoke my bacon at the Old 27 Grill. After a long curing process of at least eight days, it's ready to go in a cold smoker. I'll slice in, I'll slide in 30, 
40, 50 pounds at a time. Hickory chips on the bottom. Smoker's completely off. Everything's ready to go. We'll put that in there real tight and snug. Set our temperature to 200 degrees. So we're going to put the bacon in the smoker and for four to six hours until we reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees. And then we're ready to get our bacon out, chill it so we can slice it thick and we're ready to sell. I'm Billy Stitt with the Old 27 Grill. I'm about to make the Holy Cow Burger. Keep going. First thing I always like to do is have a really, really hot skillet. So let's get that going. Then I have clarified butter back here. I'm going to put one ounce clarified butter in that skillet. Let that get nice and warm. I'm going to take a hand patted certified Angus beef 8 ounce burger. Thin it out a little bit so we can get some good bun coverage. And I am going to encrust it in coarse black pepper. While I'm doing that you can see that butter. The key to clarifying butter is to have it so it won't burn so quickly. It gives you a little more cooking time and it works a lot better. Alright, so we've got that fully encrusted, nice and peppery on the top, the bottom, the sides, and all of that fun stuff. My skillet looks to be good and hot and bubbly. Drop that right in the center. As that burger's cooking, I'll kind of go through the other ingredients. Start with clarified butter, coarse black pepper. I'm going to add white wine, heavy cream, Worcestershire sauce. The fats from that burger are going to reduce down and mesh with that butter and that wine and that cream and just make a savory, delicious apois sauce. An old Hungarian way of cooking. It's a fabulous way to do a burger and it's definitely my favorite way to cook. I actually do a steak this way also. I'm going to do this a few times so it doesn't stick to my pan. Okay. While that, while that burger's cooking, I'm going to take some red onions, place those around the side, let those caramelize nice and pretty. They're a big part of this dish. Now it's time to get that white wine in there to speed that cooking process up. Now imagine on a busy night and we're doing about a dozen of these at a time along with all the other rest rest ingredients. It's a pretty long cook time on this dish, and it's not something you can make the sauce in advance. It requires the, the fat from each, each piece of protein to, to make the sauce per order. It is a wonderful dish. All right, so while that's going, ah, look at the nice crust on there. I like a nice medium rare to medium on my burger, but we're not in any hurry there. The onions are caramelizing good. You can see that brown glaze on the skillet. That means things are going right, and that's always a good sign. I try to cook the burger to about halfway to my desired temperature before I add my cream, and then it's cream time. And this is when all the magic happens. All of those wonderful ingredients are just going to pull together and make this a pois sauce. You see how it's caramelized? It's, it's got a nice brown, almost a gravy consistency. It's bubbling on the edges. Those onions are getting in there, those peppercorns, that fat from that burger, are all coming together. So we're getting close. We're getting close. Perfectly toasted brioche bun. My buns are baked locally by our friends right down the road, and they're delicious. So I'll have that ready for our, our plating. Just about ready to pick these onions up. I think I'm ready right now. I'm going to put those on top, and I am going to sneak a couple of slices of fresh tomato in there and I'm really not cooking that tomato I'm just kind of glazing it and softening it up a little bit in that sauce makes everything really fold together and taste outstanding and my last little step before I go to bun 
is I take a slice of Swiss American cheese, which works really well for us. I put that on there. If you're in a hurry, you can put a dome over that or something fun. Like an old pie tin, let that melt down really good. We'll give that a couple of seconds before we go to plating. Okay. Ah, doesn't that look good? All right, let's build the holy cow. I have a locally baked brioche roll made by our friends down the road. Take my tomato to kind of build the foundation. I'm gonna get a nice hefty portion of arugula. Build that up nice and tall. So that's gonna look good. Come back to my skillet. Bring that burger with that perfectly softened cheese. Set that on there like that. Oh yeah, looking good. Now's the fun stop. Pour the leftover of that sauce. Get all the good stuff out of there. Let it go down the sides on both sides because we're going to encircle this with some hand cut french fries. Tossed in kosher salt. And you want that sauce to just drip out and grab those fries so you can dip them in it. And you have got the old 27 Holy Cow Burger. All right, let's talk about the Old 27 Fried Sweet Potato Pie. These are made in mass quantity with brown sugar, real butter, cinnamon, and spices. Lots of fun stuff, rolled out, pressed, and frozen. So they need to be frozen to cook properly. So I've got a 350 degree fryer ready to go. Fry basket there. I'm not going to lay them in the fry basket and place it in there because they will stick. So I'm going to carefully drop those dudes down in there like that. And then I'm going to give it a little shake in a minute. To make sure they're not uh, hanging onto the bottom there. And I'm going to fry them for about five to seven minutes depending on volume. All right. Let's take these two pretty pies. Let's lay them on my board. This is a fried sweet potato pie. Everybody loves these. I'm gonna cut them on the bias like so. Place these dudes kind of standing up like that. Take our fresh whipped cream, which I've got a little handy squeeze bag here. Make a pretty little center. Okay. And then take a little caramel. Dress that plate up. And that is the old 27 grill fried sweet potato pie. To make that even better, you could use one of our 27 add-ons and wrap it in Billy's small batch bacon, which takes it to a whole nother level. The only requirement to eat one of those is that you own a couch.